howdy. How the heck are you doing? I'm doing a follow-up. I had a couple of questions. Romex, again, in the residential industry, it's our friend and our buddy. But somebody asked when we were talking about conduit fill, remember we were talking about can I put or how do I size conduit with Romex going in there? One of the things we talked about, location, because Romex isn't meant to be installed in damp or wet locations, but also the actual fill. How much of this conduit are we filling up with this Romex? And again, uh, I believe in table nine we're talking about this Romex can't fill up basically just over half of this in the cross-sectional area. So somebody said, hey, what if I strip off the sheath? Then we're back to being probably okay, right? Because now the cross-sectional area of these wires is way smaller than the whole sheath. So I think that works, and a lot of times you have to. Let's say we're running a Romex through an attic, coming out to a space, not outdoors, where we have to, we want to run in conduit, we just want to transition, you can strip off the sheath, push that through there. A couple things to remember. One, when the Romex is going into the conduit, let's say out of a, a ceiling or a, a wall, we need to secure that Romex somehow, okay? So if you can get a staple on it where it's still on the sheath coming inside, staple it, okay? Strip it off. Here's what we're doing. The inspector's going to look for, and the code wants us to protect the Romex, to keep it from moving back and forth and eventually wearing through the sheath or the conductors. Here's the other thing. Think about the size of your circuit, okay? In other words, and this is really more of an interest to make you think, if you strip a, a sheet of a uh, Romex, pull the conductors out, what kind of insulation is on these conductors? I used to always think, well, of course, it's THHN, and so I can use a certain wire table in uh, table 310, uh, 16. Well, the answer is no. <laughs> so I've looked at this in several different brands of Romex. There's nothing stamped on these wires. They're completely blank. So here's what happens. If you go to uh, table 310.16, back to the book. If you go to 310.16, what you're going to see is you see uh, tables for copper and aluminum, but if we look at the insulation type, your ampacity, how much current you can draw through a certain size wire, is driven by the insulation, whether it's THHN or THW, TW, doesn't matter, UF, okay? And when you look at the table in these columns, that's what you're looking for. And they're divided 60, 75, and 90 degrees Celsius, okay? And the higher the temperature is, the more amps you can get on that wire. So for residential, to simplify, we're pretty much always stuck in the 60 degree column, the lowest column for ampacity, okay? So why does this all matter? If you're running, you've stripped your Romex and you're just continuing the individual conductors through the pipe, okay? What's the ampacity on these? So here's the thing, and I'll tell you why in a second. There's a story, of course, involving an inspector. We have to be for residential in the 60 degree column. So that means if you're running number 12, you're still only going to get 20 amps, okay? That's not a big deal until you go larger. Let's say we're running for my favorite topic, an EV charger, and I'm running 6.3 for a 50-amp mobile connector or a 14-50R. So I'm running 6.3 through the attic. I'm coming out in the garage. It's not a wet location. I'm going to sleeve it down in pipe because of framing. Go to a 14.50R plug. Fantastic. So where I sleeve that Romex wire through the pipe, that 6.3, what ampacity is that? Usually it was like, I don't care. It fits in the pipe and it, it rolls and I turn on the breaker and it runs. Gold star. Mm, no, no, not a gold star. Um, if you look at 6.3 in the 60 degree column, we do get 55 amps out of that, okay? So it works for that. But I've seen plenty of people use that same number 6 for 60 or even a 70 amp circuit. It's in the wrong column. So. All I'm saying, again, like we'll see in a lot of videos, look at the book, look at your wire. So, because of apparently my spare time, if you look at your Romex, regardless of what brand it is, it'll either be print, printed or stamped on it what's going on in terms of the construction specs. Okay, so again, know what you're doing because you've actually read it and studied it versus that somebody else told you or you saw another video that just said, hey, do it, you're fine. You're like, well, that works for me. Here's the thing, the Romex, is very limited really where you can use it. If you look at the, the specs are printed by the manufacturer, 
It's rated for up to 600 volts. You got number 12s in this one because you got the yellow sheath. That's how I remember. Um, but there's nothing on there about the insulation type, whether it's THHN or THO. It doesn't matter. It's not here. So we have to use the lowest temperature column for amperage. Okay? So just remember that. A lot of times it's either inconvenient or we don't want to spend the extra money to do it right. Um, now, just for interest, bear with me here. Is there another way? There's another table in Article 310, which I didn't read till really recently, I'm ashamed to say. There's the next table over, and it, all of a sudden I'm reading this table. It's uh, 310, excuse me, 31017. So when you get a chance to do this, it'll kind of freak you out. And just bear with me. So in 31017, I can, with the number 6, I can only get in the 6 degree column. Um, well, let's go to the, the, the higher column. Um, in the 9 degree column, I can only go in THHN to 75 amps. Now here's interesting. If I take that same wire and it's in open air, it's not in the sheath, it's not in the pipe, according to uh, table 31017, I can get 105 amps. Okay, 30 amps more. Why? Because of heat dissipation. So the code's telling us one of the reasons we have to be so low when something's in the sheath or in a conduit, there's no place as this thing heats up for that heat to go. And if it's, if it's not enough airspace, it's eventually going to damage its insulation. The copper itself is bulletproof. It can hold all kinds of amperage. Just like I said, the number six. Usually we do 50 amps in residential with that. But if it's open air, you can do 105 amps. So the thing is, is being aware, it's the insulation and it's air. Is this wire cooling down? And a lot of people are like, I don't care. Once it's in the studs and it's closed up, but you think about that, right? Yeah. That's probably your home. So we get stuff heating up inside your walls. And if you don't believe me, go to a construction site where somebody is using a, a flimsy little orange extension cord and they're running their, uh, their chop saw, their skill saw on it. Pick that cord up and hold it. It's hot, okay? Now imagine you've got wires, Romex, not the same as a cord, but still conductors, inside your wall, no place for the heat to go. And you've undersized the wire, you've overloaded it for the insulation. It's going to get hot, okay? Yep. Not safe. So uh, the two things to sort of recap is once you strip off the insulation of Romex and you, let's say, transition from a box or attic to an exterior pipe, think about how you're sizing that wire. It's going to be in the 60-degree column, okay? And part of that, again, the inspector story. I told you this. We ran 6.3 because we misread along the way that number 6, THHN, in the 75 degree column, we can do 60 amps. Well, I assumed, and the inspector questioned me thoroughly when he saw a 6.3 coming out of a panel and we opened it up, sleeved it through a piece of pipe, and went to our, uh, actually, a Tesla wall connector. And he says, are those number sixes rated THHN? I said, yes. And he says, I don't see that printed anywhere. So he was trying to walk me through to get me to discover that with Romex, regardless of the gauge, there's no insulation markings. And if there's not, you have to assume the lowest column. So thanks for joining me again. As I'm reading these wires, I remember, click like to subscribe. Um, and we'll talk to you later.